Thank you, Corey. Thank you so much. Startup Grind, how's it going? I am so excited for my talk today because I'm talking. So first of all, like Corey said, my name is Eric Ray. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Podium. And I'm excited today to talk to you all about how to build software for underserved markets, which doesn't get talked a lot, talked about a lot because it's just not that common. And I think that's the big lesson here. So um, first of all, a little bit about Podium, other than what Corey said, we're a communications and payments platform for over 100,000 local businesses. We started in 2014, so I've been doing this for about six years with my co-founder, Dennis. And we have learned a ton of lessons in the last six years, but I wanna focus on the lessons that we learned serving this underserved market, which is local businesses. Um, before we go into the lessons, I wanna just go back to our founding story because I think it will provide a ton of great context for the lessons. So we started Podium in 2014. The whole reason Podium even exists today is because when I was growing up in Canada, my dad owned a tire shop. And when I was in high school, I worked at his tire shop. And so when I was 15, 16 and 17, I worked at this Goodyear tire store that my dad owned. And when I started, I was fixing tires in the back and doing oil changes. And then when I got a little older, I worked at the front and I helped customers. And so by the time I graduated from high school, I had this very interesting experience, which is I knew what a local business did. And I kind of had a deep understanding of how they run. And I knew two things. I didn't really think it was important at all at the time, uh, but I knew two things. I knew number one, uh, it was really, really hard to run a local business. My dad had run that business for 15 years and he worked from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday, pretty much my entire upbringing. And so I knew it was really hard. And then the second thing I knew, uh, sadly, was I didn't want to follow in my dad's footsteps and take over the tire shop because I'd always loved technology. and I wanted to be an entrepreneur like my dad, but I wanted to do it with technology. And so I went off to school. I moved south to the United States. I studied computer science and business. And while I was in college, out of my dorm room, I started an e-commerce business. And this e-commerce business was selling iPad accessories online. I built it on Shopify. I ran this business by myself out of my dorm room. It was doing, uh, in college, $75,000 of revenue a year. And I thought it was the best business ever. I thought I was Steve Jobs 2.0. Um, but I was running this little e-commerce business. And what blew me away, and this was like the light bulb, that went off that caused me to start Podium with my co-founder, Dennis, was I realized that my $75,000 a year revenue e-commerce business, kind of fly by night business being run out of a dorm room had 10 times better technology than my dad's tire shop, which was doing three plus million dollars a year in revenue, had 10 employees, had been around for 15 years. And by the way, it was going to be around another 15 years as opposed to my e-commerce business, which only lasted while I was in college. So this just blew my mind. I could not believe that my e-commerce business had 10 times better technology. And so I got together with my co-founder, Dennis, and we, I said, this is crazy. Like, you, why isn't anybody building for this market? And we started doing research and we realized that like nobody in software was building for these local businesses like tire shops. And so we started Podium. That was the beginning of Podium. And Fast, that was 2014, fast forward six years. And like I said at the beginning, we, we have a large business. We almost have a thousand employees. We have a hundred thousand local businesses that use our product every day. Um, we raised over $200 million in venture capital and we have some of the best uh, investors in the world backing us. And so we've had a lot of success. Um, hasn't come, it's come with a lot of mistakes and a lot of learnings. But the reason I'm so excited to chat about my learnings is because Local business is a massively underserved market, but it's not the only one. There are hundreds of underserved markets out there that are ripe for technology to disrupt them and help them. And so I hope that in this talk, the lessons I share can help you build for these underserved markets and help them because they need our help more than anybody else. So let's dive into the lessons I learned. So first one, um, in, over the six year period of building Podium, the number one lesson I've learned is my lack of exposure to technology, especially like tech companies in general, was a huge blessing. And let me tell you why. So not working, so out of coming out of college, I started Podium. 
not working at like Google or Facebook or, or working at another tech startup, it helped keep my focus on the problems to solve on the problems that I knew really well, which were my dad's tire shop problems. And so um, that was a huge blessing. And kind of what I've observed talking with hundreds of other founders and CEOs over the last six years is when we get into tech and we get into software, we tend to want to solve our own problems. And so we tend to like create technology solutions for technologists or for enterprise businesses. And we stop thinking about these other markets. And so it was a huge blessing to not have the skewed uh, point of view and trying to solve problems for like myself. And so that was a huge learning. And one thing other one, one thing else that we've seen is a lot of uh, people, if they do try and build for underserved markets, they try and like solve their own problems for the businesses, these like local businesses, for example. So a good example is um, it, it would be a great idea possibly, or it would, it would sound like a great idea to build a Slack for local businesses. And that sounds great. That sounds really great. I'm sure. And a lot of people have tried that actually. And it's not that local businesses and local business owners don't have a problem with internal communication and collaboration. The problem is that that local business owner doesn't wake up in the morning and think about their internal collaboration problem. So it's just not the, the right problems to solve. And so even today at Podium, we have to fight the urge to try and see our own problems in the, in the uh, problems that our customers have. And so that was the, big, not the first big learning. Second big learning is entering these underserved markets. It takes a lot of humility and, and some courage because uh, we did, I, mean, I had experience from my dad's tire shop but you don't know these worlds like it's the big chasm that you have to cross is like you don't know the problems and the situations of a tire shop or a plumber or a car dealership and so when we first started podium we built our minimal viable product in like a month and then in order to start selling it we uh got in the car every morning for the first entire year of the business and we would drive to local businesses and walk in and talk to them and and tell them about our solution and try and sign them up and in the first few weeks, I remember this very vividly, first few weeks that we were going door to door, we walked into an auto repair shop and it was a, in a good part of town. It would look like a great business. It was a great business. And we st started talking to the owner about our solution and podium. And about two minutes in, he said, hey guys, I have to stop you real quick. And we're like, okay, why? And he said, I wanna let you know, we don't even have a computer at this business. We do everything with a pen and paper to the to this day, and we don't plan on having a computer ever. And this blew Dennis and I away. And, and it was a really good understand. It was a really good moment of understanding that like we needed to deeply understand these customers and their problems. And and uh it took humility. It like takes humility to go into a business that you don't understand at all. And and we thought we were really cool. Like, you know, you're in tech, you feel cool, but like going in and talking to these owners was really, really, uh, it was critical for us to be successful, especially understanding that some of them didn't even have computers for us to help solve their problems. Um, so that's the second lesson. Third lesson is what you build. So if you do decide to build software or technology for these underserved markets, I can guarantee you that the business that you build initially, it will look nothing like the Silicon Valley ideal of what a tech company is supposed to be. And Dennis and I learned this dozens of times over the last six years. Um, you will feel like an imposter. A good story is Dennis and I started Podium in 2014. We got into Y Combinator in 2016, which we thought was a miracle. We never thought in a thousand years we would ever get accepted into YC. Luckily we did. We got in, we got into Y Combinator. And then when we got to YC, we felt like total imposters because every other company in our batch, it seemed like was doing something really cool and really sexy, like AI or robotics or med tech. And, and we were just doing software for plumbers and dentists. And like, we didn't feel like we fit in. And in fact, halfway through Y Combinator, we went to our partners, Dalton Caldwell and Aaron Harris. And we said, Hey, we we're going to pivot our business we decided we could build some AI product that would be really cool for local businesses. We didn't really know quite what it would be, but we thought it was just way more on trend. And so we told our partners and we said, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna pivot. We think it's the right thing to do for fundraising and this and that. And they said, hold on, what are you talking about? Why would you, why would you pivot? 
we're like, well, I don't know. We just think it's more enticing. And they said, guys, you have two things that most YC companies don't have when they're going through our program is you have product market fit. You know, your product works for your customer base and you have hundreds of customers paying you every month. And so do not pivot. In fact, keep going and just double down on what you're doing because you have it. And this was a really good lesson for us because, well, first of all, uh, Y Combinator is very helpful. Second of all, uh, we realized that we didn't need to fit in with what we thought a Silicon Valley startup should be. We didn't look like them. Our customers didn't look like them, but it didn't matter because we had traction, we had product market fit. The other place you'll see this is when you raise money. When we raised money, it was really difficult in the early days. And investors by nature are pattern matchers. And you will not, if you're, if you're building for an underserved market, you will likely not fit in with their patterns. And uh, fortunately, and this can be really discouraging, like we've had, we had venture capitalists walk out of our office mid pitch in the early days because it just didn't sound like something that was going to be world changing. Um, fortunately, there are plenty of investors out there that can see through the flaws of pattern matching. And those are the investors that you should partner with. And we were really fortunate that uh, folks like Excel, GV, IVP, and others backed us early on. And I mean, what the, the big lesson here is, uh, you won't look like the typical Silicon Valley company, but, Fast forward a couple of years, it won't matter because once you have a couple hundred million in revenue and you have the traction and the validation from your customers and from that market, it will not matter. And so that's another huge lesson that we learned along the way. Um, here, here's So those are the three main lessons that I learned over the past six years serving underserved markets. Um, there are hundreds of underserved markets. And to sum it up, we, we underserve these markets as techno, a technology community because we don't understand them and we don't know them. Um, it takes courage and humility to build for these underserved markets. It is intimidating. I know this sounds weird. It is intimidating to go into a dentist and try to talk to them about their business and a solution that you have when you don't know much about dentistry. It is intimidating. But if you make the commitment and you are humble and have courage, you can make a huge dent in the world and the payoff can be both swift and incredibly meaningful. And we've seen that at Podium. And so I hope that we, I hope that all of you decide to build for underserved markets because they need our help more than any other market. Like, you know, the tech world doesn't need another Slack, but guess what? Local businesses and all these other underserved uh, sectors of the economy, they need solutions uh, that are powered by technology. And so I hope all of you decide to go build for underserved markets and I wish you the best of luck. And hopefully a couple of these lessons will be helpful to you as you build your businesses. So thank you so much and uh, have a great rest of the conference.